It is game day, folks. Your number one seed, Michigan Wolverines, trying to beat UCLA to head to the Final Four. It'll be actually the second Final Four in three last NCAA tournaments. It'll be Michigan's third Final Four in the last eight NCAA tournaments. And we'll talk about this later, but we really solidify in my mind that the Wolverines are a basketball school. But before we jump into today's video, we're going to break down Michigan versus UCLA. I want to ask you guys to subscribe. I know we, all, we ask to subscribe every video. Okay, it's YouTube. You deal with it. But we're really close to a milestone, 13,000 subscribers, nine away. This one's taking a little bit longer. We used to get like 100 a day during the football season. This one's taking a couple weeks to break that milestone. So go ahead and subscribe. Putting out three, four, five videos a day. Get to 13,000. Might be doing six videos a day. You never know. So subscribe to the channel. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV, Michigan Football Report, and we're bringing you awesome basketball content like this. Welcome in. It is Michigan versus UCLA. Are we going to break down to the keys to the victory for Michigan? Take a look at the starting lineup and some impactful play that's been happening recently. And look at the road to the Elite Eight for both Michigan and number 11 seed UCLA. But before we start off, if you love Michigan basketball and you want to see a big victory tonight and a Final Four appearance, type Go Blue in the comments. Spam the comments and I'll tell you what. There's no limits, okay? You, you can type in it twice. You can type Go Blue three times if you want. I think if you type in four times, Michigan's probably going to go to the Final Four. That's just my opinion. But go ahead down in the comments and type Go Blue. Is Michigan now a basketball school? No matter what happens tonight, is Michigan a basketball school? They're looking to advance, as I said, to the second Final Four in the last three tournaments. Now, it'd be the second Final Four in four years, but since there was no tournament in 2020, 2018 they went, 2019 they didn't. 2021 they do. That's two out of the last three. Fourth Elite Eight appearance in the last eight years will be their third Final Four if they win tonight. And can, can, you know, can, considering that they're continuing to win, have made it to Elite Eight, haven't, let Gon, haven't lost and let Gonzaga pull away, Michigan still leads most tournament wins by a school over the last eight tournaments since the 2013 tournament. Of course, when they went to the national title game and lost to Louisville, Gonzaga is one game behind Michigan in that race to kind of own the last eight years. It's an arbitrary number, but nevertheless, you take statistics and you uh, gear them towards what fits your narrative, right? That's how the uh, the internet works. So I think Michigan, if they make this Elite Eight, that's three in the last eight years. I mean, frankly, that's up there with schools like Oklahoma and others in football where they're making the national championship of the college you know, football playoff. You know, one out of every two years, one out of every three years, and that's where Michigan is getting into this category. And with the number one recruiting class coming in next year, the train should not be stopping anytime soon. Let's take a look at this Elite Eight matchup, Michigan-UCLA. Look, there's one team that's supposed to be here, Michigan. There's one team that no one expected to be here, and that is the UCLA Bruins. The game tips off tonight, 9.57 p.m. Eastern time, a late one for y'all in the East Coast, in the East time zone on a Tuesday night. It's in Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Uh, UCLA, 21-9 and in the year. Michigan is a six-point favorite in the game. One note that I think is really intriguing. UCLA is the first team in college basketball history to make it to the Elite Eight after they lost their last four regular season games before the tournament. They lost their last three Pac-12 regular season games, and then their first game, their only game in the Pac-12 tournament, Entered this tournament on a four-game losing streak, but have won four straight since. They had to do the play on game against Michigan State, uh, and then have won three since. Let's take a look at Michigan's tournament results thus far. As you see on the screen, though, Michigan is a six-point favorite tonight. Wolverines beat Texas Southern. It was a blowout early on, and Michigan got a little sloppy in the second half, ended up winning 86-78. to Then they beat LSU in a game that, you know, LSU got off hot. Michigan kind of controlled the game in the second half, and then controlled the game from start to finish against the fourth-seeded Florida State Seminoles a couple days ago. Michigan won a few schools. I think maybe the only school that has faced the highest-ranked seed that they could possible uh, leading up to the Elite Eight. They faced 16, they faced the 8, they faced the 4. No upsets. Uh, we said Houston what, has all double-digit wins uh, on their road to the Final Four, so they've had a little bit easier track than Michigan may have. But the Wolverines do get a little bit break tonight. They didn't get Alabama. They've got number 11 seed UCLA, who won the playoff playing game against Michigan State, who had a double-digit lead in the second half of the game. I think they were up six with 90 seconds left. That game ended up going to OT. Michigan State lost this one to UCLA. Uh, Bruins win in 86-80 in overtime. But then they beat uh, BYU 73-62. Uh, Albaline Christian 64-47, an absolute blowout. Then looked like they had the, the win against Alabama in regulation. 
Bama hits a three-pointer at the buzzer. Going to OT, I personally thought Alabama was going to win, take that momentum, but it was all UCLA in the overtime. They beat the Alabama Crimson Tide 88-78 to advance to the Elite Eight. Now, you guys can get going and reap the benefits if Michigan advances, not just with your feelings, your happiness, but you could also get going and financially benefit with our sportsbook partner, BetUS at chatsports.com slash go blue. It'll redirect you to the sign up page with BetUS so you can use that 120, use that promo code to get 125% deposit bonus. So I'll make it simple for you. Chatsports.com slash go blue. Land on the page, you sign up, you make your first deposit, use that promo code GOBLUE, put in 100, you get an extra 125 in your BetUS account. You put in 200, an extra 250. 300, math team, that's an extra 475 sitting in your account to bet. I've got 25 bucks, a meager bet, on uh, on one team tonight. I'm not going to give everyone any hints, but wink, wink, you know who I'm going with. So get going, BetUS and Chat Sports. It's chatsports.com slash GOBLUE. So Jawan Howard Coaching in his first tournament this year, three and zero, trying to make an NCAA, trying to make a Final Four in his first first tournament appearance as a coach. Fun fact: Jawan Howard has now been in four NCAA tournaments, three as a player, one as a coach. Made it to the Lee Lee Eight every single time. So it's a pretty cool stat for him. Let's take a look at the keys to victory for the Michigan Wolverines in this one. Number one, I saw someone. Uh, a basketball guru on Twitter a couple days ago said, hey, if Brandon Johns can get involved, if he scores 10 points, Michigan's going to win. I'm like, that's a really arbitrary number. But I'll tell you what, Brandon Johns got going and replacing Isaiah Livers, and he scored, I think it was 14 points. That was maybe one of the keys of the game, getting him going early. The, t- the Florida State couldn't collapse on Hunter Dickinson. Dickinson and Brandon Johns were having a great high-low game from the post. They were hitting each other on assists left and right. That was fun to see. Next up, why is UCLA here? Well, it's because Alabama didn't make the free throws, right? Under 50% shooting, including some key misses down the stretch uh, against UCLA a couple nights ago. So if Michigan makes the free throws, which they didn't do that well a couple days ago against Florida State, then this one should go in the Wolverines' favor, or at least certainly have them in a better position to do so, and force turnovers. When UCLA turns the ball over 10 or more times, they are a much more likely team to lose. And I looked at the stats today. When UCLA takes care of the ball, I mean, it's pretty simple, right? When UCLA takes care of the ball, they are typically winning, right? When they don't, more 10 or more turnovers, they're going to lose most times. So we'll see what happens there. Brandon Johns, get him involved scoring. Make your free throws of your Wolverines and play great defense. Force some turnovers. But I'm going to ask you guys this question. Who you got in this one? UCLA or Michigan, if you want to predict the score too, I'll take your score prediction. But go down in the comments. I want you to type M or U. And again, if you want to get crazy, go ahead and let me know your score prediction. Make sure while you're here, follow me on Twitter, at James Yoder. We put out some Michigan football news quite a bit. I've told you a week or so ago about a transfer that ended up happening yesterday in Giles Jackson. So go ahead and follow me, at James Yoder. Let me know you watch the show. Uh, let me know you're an mf or Just tweet at me. I'll retweet you and follow you back. It's the 30th, so you got a day and a half left. I'm following everybody back who types who tweets at me that they're an mf or So go ahead and do that. It's at James Yoder. I only tweet about Michigan football and some other stuff, and basketball too, obviously. The starting lineup without Isaiah Livers looks like this. It's Mike Smith and Eli Brooks in the backcourt, nine-ish points a game for each one of these guys. Franz Wagner, he's listed as a guard, and technically is a guard in Michigan's three-guard lineup. 12 and a half points, almost 13 points a game, 12.8 there. Um, the best player on the floor against Forest State, in my opinion. Hunter Dickinson putting in over 14 a game, and then Brandon Johns, uh, 10 points a game in 10.7 in the NCAA tournament. Now, he hasn't been a starter. He was actually like, I think you can make a case he's the seventh or eighth man most times. But in this NCAA tournament, uh, he's had double digits in two games, seven in another one. So he's averaging over 10 in this tournament. And if he continues tonight, you keep an eye on his stats. If he goes in halftime with six or eight points, you've got to be feeling really good if you are a Michigan basketball fan. My biggest takeaway from this one. UCLA has one player who is 6'9". Everybody else, much smaller, right? They've got a couple guys in that 6 foot, 6 6'2 range, a couple players, 6'4", 6'5". But Michigan has a definite size advantage. But you know what? So did Alabama a couple nights ago, and they didn't use it very effectively. Hunter Dickinson, Franz Wagner, Brandon Johns. Get the ball, download those guys. They did an excellent job against Florida State. 
Got to keep it rolling against UCLA tonight. So I'm very looking very uh, closely on this one. If Michigan uses their size advantage early, gets offensive rebounds, dominates the board, but making sure that Brandon Johns, Hunter Dickinson, and in some ways, Franz Wagner get the ball down low and make it happen.